a question has arisen, which I suppose was inevitable. Um, if guilt is a negative value state, and it's a form of coercion, and it's a tool, I guess you would call it, of negative utilitarianism only. Uh, in other words, it um, it's just essentially another bad thing being used to prevent a bad thing. Uh, it's just essentially the whip preventing you from applying <clears throat> the very same whip against somebody else. It's using pain to restrain oneself or to restrain others. Doesn't make you any better if you're guilt-ridden. Um, <clears throat> now that's a pretty insane conundrum to get into, but it, that's the kind of thing that sends you into uh, a guilt spiral, into a state of paralyzed um, neurosis. Uh, possibly even psychosis, if you ask me. If guilt takes on certain proportions, it can run your life. It can destroy your life uh, as well, if you ask me. It's if, if it's not actually understood for what it is, I don't think that people grasp what a devastating thing guilt is. Um, it's, it's pain. It's abuse. It's all of the above. Um, so, okay, so we take away guilt as a means of making ourselves into a good person, okay? Um, because we say, all right, you can't coerce somebody into doing the right thing. If I point a gun at somebody's head and say, help that little old lady across the street or I'll blow your brains out, well the act of helping the little old lady across the street becomes a little bit less than it would be otherwise if one did it of one's own free will. The question, I suppose, arises, um, how do we... What, what constitutes goodness minus the ego? Um, or what constitutes goodness in the absence of punishment? If you take away rewards and punishment, what does it mean to be good? Um, or I suppose, in the same breath, one could say, if you take away rewards and punishments, what does it mean to be bad? Uh, hint. Once again, I'm not advocating the abolition of jails and cops and courts.